So according to everything you did without me, what do you think, what is one of the major things that affects our climate? Okay, but that's not what you do without me. It's greenhouse gases, okay? We know that greenhouse gases determine our climate on Earth. They actually are the reason why Earth is at a uh, temperature that we can, you know, sustain life in. And it's not your distance from the sun, it's distance from what? Look at that picture. Distance from what? Distance from the equator. But solar activity is definitely a factor, okay? Obviously, the sun's rays come down and they are, you know, because of the greenhouse gases, <laughs> re-rated back to Earth. Topography, do you know what that is? Yeah. Like yeah, ma mountains, low, flat, high. low, high, okay. So also geography, where you live is gonna be, uh, uh, climate is gonna be affect of that. But it's really topography. The way the land is shaped uh, is affected by, or is affected by climate. What else? Good, air and water circulation, and lastly, volcanic. volcanic activity, which we know is really the start of our Earth's climate, so that makes sense. Kind of applies what we just said. Our, our climate has been pretty much determined by specific things, and we just said it, what determines our climate. But these things are, you know, what describe the history of our climate, so what are they? I'm sorry? Now, history, we're going back. Volcanic activity, which, believe it or not, obviously led to carbon emissions, right? And led to water. So that, too, is correct because both of those emitted gases that determine our climate. What else? Meteors, good. We know that started it all, right? What else? Good. Shifting of the continents in general. The plate shift, the continent shift, topography affects climate, so climate drastically changed because of the movement of the continents. And lastly, we know what is directly related, so, solar input, good. And we measure this history of Earth as glacial and interglacial periods. What would glacial be? What do you reference it as? What's the word? Ice age. And then in between ice age would be interglacial. So for years, no doubt that, and this is a quote from your book, everybody knows that the Earth is warming rapidly or our atmosphere is warming the earth at a rapid pace. And the biggest debate now is, it, is it linked to human activities or is it a, a naturally occurring thing? Because of the direct correlation between carbon dioxide uh, levels and temperature, they're not really sure if the temperature leads to the rise in the CO2 or the CO2 leads to the rise in the temperature. You guys can develop your own opinion about this, but there, there's no doubt that the earth is warm. That's official. So let's talk about how this is happening and what are the consequences. First, how do they know this? There are specific um, things, and this is what I was telling you about before, that you don't have to know the exact details. Like, what is this? What is one of the things that helps you know uh, the history of Earth's fossils? Do you have to know how, what do they do to fossils in order to know this? And the answer is no, okay? You just have to know that fossils is one of them. Organism remains, specifically they talk about using plankton, insects, and uh, droppings from bats uh, to kind of, I'm sure, do some kind of analysis of carbon-14, which you could write that, carbon-14. You learned that back in um, uh, bio. We also have temperatures, uh, readings back from 1861 that we use as a guide. And obviously, it's clear here. If I was going to show you this graph right here on a test, and I was going to tell you, describe for me overall patterns of Earth's temperatures, how would you do it? Look at the whole graph. If you say increasing steadily, is that correct? No. Eh, it's, huh? No exponential. This is in populations. Look at this graph. What do you see? You see overall growth. Okay, so what do you see? Fluctuation. You see peaks and declines, peaks and declines, or increase and decrease, increase and decrease, but overall the pattern is it's going up. Yes? Especially in what? the more recent years, 
drastically rising in the more recent years. And I'll tell you a little bit more. We also take um, these, if you look at this picture right here, I'll point to it in the video. These are called ice cores. They pull them out of glaciers, glaciers. And they use that also to determine history of Earth's climate. One, we already said the greenhouse gases, which by the way, a lot of you said the greenhouse gas effect. It's the greenhouse effect caused by greenhouse gases. And we know that without this um, naturally occurring uh, changes of rays of our sun, our Earth is at a specific temperature that is perfect for life. Without it, it would be too cold. But and many of you did great in saying this, because of specific excess of, spe of certain greenhouse gases, Earth is becoming warm. So that's what today's current greenhouse effect is like. Here are our main greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide, methane, water, CFCs, ozone, and nitrous oxide. In addition, we've got hydrochlorofluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons. I just want you to know that they're, uh, you could say hydrocarbons because we've got chlorofluorocarbons, I mean methane and these hydrocarbons that also contribute to the warming of Earth. For years, carbon dioxide, methane, water, and nitrous oxide were the gases that you discussed when you talked about greenhouse gases. Number one, these are naturally occurring, yes? So they are your natural greenhouse gases. Number two, carbon dioxide emissions has exceeded or, or increased so drastically ever since the burning of fossil fuels, including nitrous oxide, that global warming is a direct link to that. So the number one greenhouse gas of concern is carbon dioxide. What's happening is that when you look at this effect, you look more in detail at what's really in the atmosphere. And these other gases actually contribute to more trapping of infrared radiation. So they're equally important to look at. And I'm going to give you the order of trapping next. Let me go right here to that slide since I'm talking about it. So if we look at the order of trapping, the number one greenhouse trapping gas is actually water. Water traps more heat than any other greenhouse gas. The second most heat trapping gas are our hydrocarbons. The third is chlorofluorocarbons. The fourth is nitrous oxide, the fifth is methane, and the sixth is carbon dioxide. So although carbon dioxide only traps a minimal amount of infrared radiation back to Earth, or re-radiate those rays back to Earth, it is so abundant, it's the number one greenhouse gas. Does that make sense? But if you have one molecule of this, it's going to trap extra heat than any other. Of course, water vapor is constantly being... Uh, taken away from our atmosphere, so that's, that gives us hope. But you think of these compounds, which also usually end up in the stratosphere, and they will cause as much damage. Usually, when you talked about it, you would start with nitrous oxide being the number one heat trapping gas. It literally, my notes said that for years. And then you worked backwards. You didn't really talk about order. Now this is really important, knowing how much potential they have to trap heat. So again, this chart kind of breaks down the three gases of concern and how they're produced. What I want you to know is transportation, okay, number one. Number two, you could just put, or the rest of the pie chart is between energy combustion and the making of goods through the industry. So half of emissions of greenhouse gases come from those two things, or those three things, I'm sorry. And then you want to know that agriculture has a big, big uh, part of the chunk and waste, okay? Waste would mean your landfills, which is our next chapter, the burning of, of uh, organic matter or anything related in that, in, in that capacity. Keep in mind that greenhouse effect always occurred. Our problem is that since the Industrial Revolution, whoops, we're emitting excess CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide through agricultural practices, the burning of fossil fuels, and deforestation. Now, I'm going to link these. So CO2 is linked to this, and so is methane, and so is nitrous oxide. Meth CO2 is linked here, and nitrous oxide is linked here, not methane. And then here we've got this, and this, and this. Basically, 
you could say they all contribute in some capacity, other than what you don't know about the methane uh, refining. When I mention deforestation, though, and I ask you, how is it directly related to extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? What's your answer? I need to hear it. Well, you could say if they burn down a forest in order to make room for agriculture, then the burning of organic matter will produce carbon dioxide and nitrous oxides, I accept. What else? Because plants are responsible for converting carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen by cutting down the forest, you're reducing the amount of carbon dioxide being reduced from our atmosphere, or you're decreasing that process. Okay, you have to know that as well. Agricultural is linked to nitrous oxide. It's linked to methane because cows produce methane. It's linked to carbon dioxide because we use uh, industrialized farming, uses fossil fuels in order to do it. All right, so the number one greenhouse gas of concern, as I mentioned before, is carbon dioxide. And the reason is, is because of all the, the little teeny weeny 1% of gases in our atmosphere that make up the, the greenhouse gases, or, or other gases besides nitrogen and oxygen, carbon dioxide is the most abundant. So it doesn't trap as much heat, but it's the most abundant. And naturally, it's gonna be in our atmosphere always. The carbon cycle puts it in there, decomposition puts it in there, respiration puts it in there, burning of organic matter and volcanoes. But the burning of fossil fuels, which is right here, and I'm gonna make this one in red, and the cutting down of our forest is the reason why there's excess amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So these are the consequences to global warming or the greenhouse effect. The consequence to the greenhouse effect is global warming. And because of global warming, all of these things are happening. Tell me them because I'm not going to write them. The pictures are just going to say, and you could type it out if you need to. Melting of ice caps or glaciers. Rising sea levels or flooding. Droughts, which lead to desertification, which if you have desertification, what else do you have? Loss of what? You have loss of habitats for organisms, loss of vegetation, shifts in biomes, okay? Because desertification is a grassland to a uh, desert, and that basically leads to a biodiversity threat. Now, I want you to keep in mind, why didn't I put loss of biodiversity? Anybody know? Why did I put threat to biodiversity and not loss? Good job. I looked at you because I remembered your video. Because some organisms actually decrease and some organisms increase because of this warming, which is kind of scary because now you have organisms that are evolving to live in warmer climates that probably shouldn't, which are kind of, let's say, like uh, non-native because it's not the normal temperatures. So they're going to thrive and not have the natural predators and that whole pattern. You're also going to have extreme weather such as tornadoes, very cold days. Don't just think of hot. Like, you know those cold, freezing days we have? That's extreme weather. Economics is a, is a problem. Poverty is a problem. And then warming, obviously, as I mentioned before. So I skipped a slide. You want to know that since the 1850s, our temperature has risen about 1 to 1 1.7 degrees. So that's 150 years Believe it or not, if you look at another graph and you go from 1920, it says one. So you had a 0.7 shift and then a, a one shift practically or anywhere around there. So you want to remember that, that figure. All right, so this panel, uh, which is basically a governmental panel on uh, dealing with issues with climate change, all agree that the temperature in the lower atmosphere is war warming, that we have this much warming, about one degree in the last hundred years. Greenhouse gas emissions are up 70%. Arctic temperatures are rising almost twice, twice as fast as the rest of the earth. So that's a more area of concern because the warming is happening faster over there. Melting of glaciers uh, is taking place. Prolonged droughts are increasing and sea levels are rising 10 to 20 centimeters in the last hundred years. So a tipping point is Carbon dioxide, they say, has reached its tipping point. That means it's, it's at an irreversible point. So climate change is, too. These describe what are the worst-case scenarios of the tipping point. And we want to talk about each one and how they're linked, okay?